Thank you so much for answering these questions. So now uh, I want to know what do you do for a living? What is your present occupation? I am a investor. I invest in small and medium-sized startups and I hire my own marketing agency which specialize in go-to-market strategy for China and yeah. Latin American markets. We, yeah, we specialize in marketing. Um, also translation as well because that's one very important part of the marketing. Um, but nowadays when people think about marketing, maybe they only think about uh, digital marketing, but we do not stop it from there. Arguably, uh, events marketing is one of the most has the most profound impact when it comes yeah. to return on investment. So yeah, we do from social media marketing, content marketing to events marketing. It's really interesting. Yeah. Thank you. And <laughs> how do you see yourself as a digital nomad and why? What's your roots? Could you please elaborate on your career life path? Could you elaborate a little more on the question? Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, how do you see yourself uh, in your career since the beginning? Uh, of being a digital nomad, you can talk about the transition. Like uh, at first, I wasn't really uh, a digital nomad, but then I realized that okay, uh, since for example, uh, 2020, uh, I think that I became a real digital nomad. And you just talk about your experiences uh, in terms of career. Yeah, sure. Um, so I was living in Madrid which is the city I'm currently in right now. I did a yeah. master program here from 2019 to 2020. That's why I was living here. And after I finished the program, I just, um, I, and then my lease was up. I was like, why don't I start, start traveling? Because I really want to go to the south of Spain, Andalusia. Yeah. Have you been? No. It's beautiful. You should come check it out. Okay. Um, yeah. I will. Lovely, <laughs> lovely Spanish people would love to host you. And... We did that. I mean, I did that. Uh, yeah. I got my apartment. I packed my suitcase, a small one to carry on and with a backpack. And I started uh, my journey from Madrid to Granada. And that's when the journey begins. Okay. But yes, the business side really took off. I think it's, I will say that before I was a digital moment, I already know a lot of people that they were my potential clients. And I actually personally have a YouTube channel as myself and then I do podcasts. So I'm usually on the other side of the uh, camera. <laughs> where I'm usually the one that's asking questions, right? So yeah. I cultivated a lot of relationships um, without wanting something back. I'm currently reading this book called the Bhagavad Gita. Have you heard of that? No, never. <laughs> it's, it's an Indian book. It's very profound and it has profound impact on the world, just like similar to the Tao, uh, the Tao Te Ching or the Bible. So this is one quote I really like. It says that we're not entitled to the fruit of our actions, but we're only entitled yeah. to the actions itself. So I did a lot of podcasts with other people without the entitled of wanting something from there but maybe that was precisely the reason because i was very present i was doing my best when i yeah. uh, was doing the interview so from there i got some clients and yeah. then i could just continue travel and go to more events meet more people meet more potential clients that they turn to my clients and more opportunities and more friendship most importantly um yes that's really interesting yeah Thank and you. When was your first international move? Do you remember? And why have you moved? Yes. Uh, I, and after that, where did you go and why? When I was 18, I moved from Asia to America for yeah. university. I was there for on and off six and a half years. I also lived in six months in Australia. And okay. yes, but first move was when I was 18. And after that, where did you go? I did six months in Australia. I did one month in Rome. And I went back to America for another three years, moved to the West Coast, started my business, oh. invested in some other smaller business. And fun fact, my visa actually got rejected on um, the end of 2018, beginning of 2019 from America. And I had to go back to China to renew my visa. And for some reason, that plan didn't work out. So I spent... 10 months in Asia and then I moved to Europe so okay. and then I've been in Europe ever since for the past three years 
Thank you. And when did you become a real digital nomad and why? So it was 2020 after I finished my program. I just began because I really want to travel, really want to explore yeah. Uh, and that began with Andalusia, explore more the Spanish culture, right? Because Spain is actually, Spain and Italy are actually two of the most visited countries on the planet. Yeah. And yeah, I'm just fascinated about their, uh, about their culture because let's say from the north of, uh, Portugal is very diverse as well, right? But from the north of Spain, I should talk with my Spanish friend today uh, about this. From the north of Spain, which is the País yeah. Vasco to the Andalusia to the Canaria Islands, there have such diverse culture. And obviously food as well, the people as well. And they speak even Spanish a little bit different too. So I was just fascinated by that. I was thinking yeah. since I've been living on this beautiful land, why don't I just talk to more local people and learn more about their culture and practice my Spanish as well, most importantly. Yeah. So that's how I started. It's great. Yeah. yeah. And do you relocate regularly? How often and why? I think it depends. I used to take four five four to six flights a month now okay. i do now i try to do like two um nowadays i try to go to one place for one month um that's why actually us we got connected because i was staying in porto for one month and yeah. uh amazing mr thomas from d house yeah. put us in touch yes <laughs> yeah nowadays i yeah it depends in porto i was one month this time i mean 10 days in madrid then i'm going yeah. to Valladolid, which is a city one hour away from Madrid. Have you heard of it? Uh, can you repeat, please? I didn't understand. It's called uh, Valladolid. It's the name of the city. No, so, I you know, so Porto is, you know, they have a uh, Rivera de Duero. Yes. Right. And then Valladolid is, on, is in Spain, right? But it's on the other side of the river. It's the same river, right? So there are a lot of, uh, just like Porto's famous with the wine. And yeah. along this river, there are many regions that have great wine. And Dubai right. is also uh, one of those oh. city and region. Okay. They have uh, great wine. And one of my clients is a bodega from the yeah. city. So I'm going to go visit them and uh, yeah, check up <laughs> on work, you know, see the friends, family. Uh, my cousin lived there as well. So yeah, business, it's family great. pleasure. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of, maybe I could speak for some of the digital men, maybe not all the digital nomad, but we are lucky enough to find or find a perfect balance or trying to find a perfect balance between work and life yeah and do you want to stop being a digital nomad anytime in the future and why maybe in august or september i would take a little break because yeah. i'll be moving to malaga in june okay. i'm now i Try to say my travel has already slowed down a little bit, but in June, I'm going to Canada from oh, Spain. Great. So I'm going to, uh, my friend, they're hosting a meditation retreat in Ontario. So that's where I'm going. I'm also going to visit some friends in Toronto. They are, um, there's a web summit taking off there. We're probably going to co-host some side events. Yeah. And with my mentor, um, Joseph there, and then going to visit my friend, Itai, in Vancouver. So going to be two weeks, more or less, in uh, in Canada. So And then come back here. Yeah. And then go to Porto, actually, at the end of June. So do some okay. surfing again. Summertime is going to be perfect. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Do yeah. you like to surf here in Porto? I love it. I was literally <laughs> surfing too much. I pulled my muscle, like, my like two days before I was leaving. So I was, like, surfing. I was standing oh. on the board, and I totally fell because my leg just gave up. And then... Yeah, so I had to lay down on, on a beach for like 45 minutes before I could move. But now I'm fine. Oh my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And also, if you want to start a family, will you continue to be, uh, to be a digital nomad and why? Who said I want to start a family? Right. You you can. You cannot. It's, a, it's, a, it's an option. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I think there... I guess these are all sayings that there's a time and place for everything. Yeah. So for maybe the spiritual people or the yogis, we say that it's old karma run, running out, which is like when you are super into something, you do that for maybe just like a dish, right? You Maybe you yeah. really like, how to say, bolas de bacalao, right? Is that what they called? 
right? Maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe someone like that very much. And then they eat that every day for one month or two weeks. And then one day they're like, hey, I don't want this anymore. Maybe they don't ever eat that for the rest of their life or maybe they don't eat that for a little while. Yeah. So just for me, this is the life or lifestyle that suits me the most. Yeah. For now, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. I get it. And what makes a destination appealing to you? What is important for you in the destination? Two or three things. Friends, okay. business, slash events, the activities. Yeah. Activities and culture. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And when have you heard about Porto? When was your first move to Porto? First time I was in Porto was actually last year for my birthday. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yes. So this summer when I go back, I will be I won't be exactly spending my birthday in Porto, but I'll be in the region. I'm gonna go to Vienna. Because my Vienna friend has, Yes, exactly. Okay. My friend uh Ricardo, he and his company, they have great, amazing offices there and great team, very lovely people. So I'm gonna go visit them. He's extremely yeah. kind. And I actually don't remember when was the first time I heard of Porto. I think it was probably maybe two years ago at Christmas when I went to Lisbon. And yeah, I actually been to Portugal like four times. Um, I really like it. I spent one month or so in Algarve in the winter. Although oh. I didn't <laughs> serve there at the moment back then. But I think it was around those times I heard about Porto. That is very gorgeous. So I made a move last summer to I went there for one week for my birthday and I had a great time. In July, it's very busy, but the city is just magical. Yeah. Yeah. And who or what influenced that first step of going to Porto? <laughs> I will say God or universe, <laughs> if you prefer that language, or <laughs> your higher self, your intuition. Because, yeah, like, it's incredible. I met musicians, entrepreneurs, different kind of artists. Yeah. business owners or just very lovely people yogis vegetarians you know people from all over the world yeah there it's it's magical that's an interesting way to see it yeah <laughs> yeah and and now why did you choose porto to live and work looking at the present moment well per currently i do not live in porto yeah i would say still about the people right so a little background story. <laughs> I look up to entrepreneurs such like Steve Jobs a lot. And yeah. he has this, uh, I'll send you a link if you haven't, have you heard of his commencement speech at Stanford University in 2005? Uh, can you be more specific, please? <laughs> so he, you're probably too young for that. Uh, <laughs> but he did a speech you know, like in, in Portugal too, right? Like when the student graduate from the university, they will have somebody to come in and do a talk. Oh, okay. Right. No, I didn't know. Okay. okay. So he did a talk on 2005 in Stanford University. And then that uh, speech changed my life. I probably listened to that 25 times at least. <laughs> and he said, he mentioned something called connecting the dots, which is essentially saying that when your life is moving forward, you are just experiencing things. You are yeah. here and you take the next step and the next step and the next step and the next step. Yeah. And you are just evaluating options and following intuition and make decisions, right? But then at one point, you can look back, you can connect in the dots. You said, oh, I got here because I was knowing these people because I took on this opportunity because I did this, then I knew these people, then I connect with them and that's where it started, right? It just like, for example... Uh, what do you do? What do you study? Do you study business or what's your major? Yeah, my my bachelor degree is in management. Okay. And now my master degree is in international economics and management. <laughs> awesome, yeah. <laughs> very interesting. Very interesting, right? So in business and in management, we talk a lot about case studies, right? Uh, this yeah. company did this because A, B, C, and D, right? But those are just putting a very complex situation into a 2 to 15 pages of paper, right? And I can right. almost guarantee you nearly 90% of those situations in business 
it was a little bit more, it was much more complicated than that. So right. this is where the Steve Jobs was saying, essentially connecting the dots. You can only connect the dots by looking backwards, right? And... I lost a train of I lost sorry I lost a train of thought here. What, what was the question again? <laughs> it was who or what? <laughs> it was who or what influenced the first step of going to Porto. You started to talk about God, and then you talk about Steve Jobs. <laughs> yes, yes. Influence going to Porto. Oh yeah, because that was because yeah. My my friends are leaving a co working space now, and then so I was saying bye to them. I got I got distracted. So no that you know universe or God, if you prefer that language, and Steve Jobs was uh, the thing about connecting the dots, right? So yeah. this time I went to Porto was because there was a crypto event called ETH Porto that was okay. organized by Sarah, Pedro, and Tiago, Thomas, and Mario, and a lot of amazing people, and more. And the new about the event, yeah, I wanted to go, I want to contribute in a unique way. And it happens around that time a little bit earlier yeah. that's me and some of my friends in america that their yogis and their musicians were working on this project which is we decided to host yoga events over europe yeah. right that's one reason i'm in madrid right now because i am this weekend i host a yoga event in the retiro park and i nice. decided i want to do that in porto so i started talking to my friends in the crypto space about it and my friends were saying that oh i'm in this group with the organizer jazzy why don't you join so I joined the group and I told him about the uh, the idea. I said, I'm going to be there and do this. Let's make it happen. And then, they, and then this is literally what happened. I proposed the idea in a group and then they put me in touch with a space where we can do yoga and which is D house uh, where Thomas is part yeah. of the team. Yeah. And uh, his partner, which is amazing, Joanna, she teaches yoga. I don't know if you know her or you. I don't know her. No. You should I take class with her. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You should tell, <laughs> totally take class with her. Practice some yoga. I strongly recommend that. And so we got a space. We got Joanna to be part of this endeavor to teach us yoga. And also we got a sponsor for the branch. And all that just essentially fall into place, right? And then suddenly yeah. we have everything we need. All I need to do is buy a plane ticket to be there. And that's what I did. And we had such a great time. We had a few yoga pop-up events and meet a lot of yogis, meet a lot of people from the Ethereum Foundation. They support this endeavor. And most important, we build a community and we just, you know, share this beautiful experience together, which is do some yoga, meet people. That's it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. It's a one-time experience. <laughs> what do you say? It's, it's like a one-time experience. <laughs> well, I think it's going to happen over and over again. So <laughs> then the story continues, right? So in the D house, these guys are great. They're opening up another office, which is the old office of Utrecht in Braga. So I went there, I met and connected with a lot of people too. And yeah. then there's one gentleman, Anton from Aurora Finance. We met there. He, then he, uh, we tried to catch up before I leave, but we're all super busy. And plus I pulled my uh, leg muscle, so we couldn't meet. And we just yeah. were just talking like, hey, dude, I'm out of here. Uh, what events are you going to next, uh, the rest couple of months? So he told me he's going to split a conference, something like that. Sorry, guys, okay. I forgot the name, but it's in split in Croatia. <laughs> he told me about this. And I was like, dude, Mediterranean, Croatia on the beach in the summer. Let's do that. So then he put me in touch with the organizer. Currently, we're talking about doing another yoga papa event in split in Croatia at the end of May. So, you know, um it could be said as once one time thing or maybe just as one thing like one thing will lead after another yeah. thing right just everything in life so right yeah, I'm, I'm i'm so i'm so grateful about these amazing people that i met and just like you to you know helping each other and supporting each other so right and how do you see porto as a mobility place what are the pros and cons could you please elaborate I think it rained too much in March. Right. <laughs> yeah, the weather reminds me a little bit of north of Spain, País Basco, which is kind of somewhat altitude. Uh, I heard in the spring it does rain a lot, but summer is absolutely amazing. I've never been there in the winter or the fall, so you will have to tell me. <laughs> Here in Porto, it rains a lot. 
really a lot and it's in some places it can be uh, very windy also uh but it doesn't snow or anything like that it's just rain but you get used to it you know so yeah and in the summer uh, and in the spring it's the weather it's very very cool so yeah <laughs> yeah i do because this is my only my second time there and i went in the early spring which is beginning of march and then i was surprised how cloudy and windy it was the yeah. first three weeks of march essentially yeah. but i think it's great especially the caps there are very cheap very affordable and food when it comes to groceries and personally i try to eat one salad a day i still very affordable housing and Airbnb now are everywhere and pricing a little bit more expensive than last year compared to last summer. Yes. I think it will be 15 to 20% increase, but I think for a long-term rental, it's still very competitive compared to obviously city like Barcelona, Madrid, Paris, Rome, yeah. for sure, even Lisbon. And I'm totally open to move there. I might just move there for six months next year Ooh. because I was planning to do that anyway. It would be great. I could totally see myself doing that. I'll be doing a lot of <laughs> surfing, going to D house a lot, and hopefully to meet you in person to ask you how your yeah, thesis is going. Sure. And yeah, sure. Yeah, that would be very lovely. Yeah. And what do you think about the transportation? Like you can talk about the airport, you can talk about the public transportation, you can talk about the boats, Ubers. I think the cabs like Ubers are very good. Yeah. Very fast. I also know there's like the boat cab from Gaia to the oh, river yeah. side. Right. Yeah, those are pretty cool. I did, I did not take them. I think when I move there, I'm going to get a kayak. I'm just going to, when I, <laughs> if I live in Gaia, I'm going to kayak across the, uh, across the river every day. And I hope they have a place for me to park my kayak. You think they have a place to do that or? Uh, I don't know, actually. Okay. <laughs> or maybe I would just use my surfboard, right? I can just paddle through because it's a river. I can just paddle through every day, like the old schools. Yeah, I I think maybe that's the most um how to say long term beneficial transportation way to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how long will you be staying in Porto? Well, the next time I'm probably gonna do like ten days or two weeks in the Porto region, but when I move there I will be doing Six months, more or less. Okay. And have you ever considered to become a permanent resident and why? Of oh, Portugal or Porto? Yeah, of Porto. Why not? <laughs> and why? <laughs> I really enjoy talking and discussing ideas with Portuguese people. Probably because in comparison, my English is 10 times better than my Spanish. <laughs> and my Spanish is getting better every day, of course. But I appreciate the how open Portuguese people are. And you guys really do speak great English. So we can really communicate freely versus maybe in some city in Spain, such as like smaller city in maybe Andalusia or Comunidad de Valencia or Castilla y Leon, maybe some people, young, even young people, they, they're they still, I think they really do understand English very well. Maybe they just don't get the opportunity to practice that much, right? So and yeah. language is like a muscle when you don't practice, they get rusty. So I would say language communication is something. Yeah. And I do not know this, but my friend told me that Porto blew up on TikTok. So that's one of the reasons <laughs> a lot of international people came. So, yeah. I also heard that uh, a lot of digital nomads came to Porto because they saw it on Nomad List. I don't know if you use that platform. I heard of that. But yes. a lot of them knew about Porto because of that. Because well, it's one of the top uh, destinations. Yeah, I will <laughs> probably repurpose this content. Uh, myself or my team will edit it and just going to name it... 10 reasons why you should move to Porto as a digital nomad, <laughs> something like that, right? Because it's exactly what we're doing, right? It's yeah, yeah. an interview with a digital nomad. Yeah, and know about your experiences and the motives for being Absolutely, here. and they're fresh. I just came back from Porto two days ago. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. And if you relocated to Porto, oh, you relocated alone, right? What? You did you relocate to Porto alone? Uh, this past time, yes. Okay. And what is your next destination and why? I'm in Madrid for one more week. I'm going to Valladolid okay. for friends and business. And then I'm moving to Malaga for six months. Great. And yes. uh, also, do you remember any publication or campaign or even initiative on social media or elsewhere that shaped your perception of Porto? If yes, what made you feel and why? I wouldn't say it's a publication. Yeah. I mean, if you could could quote other people's social media post is publication. Yeah. I follow my yeah. friend that I met in Porto and she's a musician. She's singing on the street sometimes. And every time I see she posts a video, uh, her name is Barbara, by the way, Barbara Beats. <laughs> and uh, I'll send you every single person I have mentioned in this podcast and drop them in the link for the podcast uh, down in below if people are curious. So oh, yeah. I, yeah, she, because she's always singing by the river, right? So I see the sunshine, people are dancing. I was like, hey, that looks great vibes. That looks like the people <laughs> I, people I want to be around and the place I want to live because people used to believe in that they have to live in Hong Kong, New York, San Francisco, yeah, Beijing, place like that, because big city has big company that employs a lot of people, but time yeah. and technology has completely changed that. Then now with Wi-Fi and internet and yeah. a table and a chair, you can get the work done in any part in the world, right? And this is a publication that I read a long time ago, but it's not directly really with Porto. But have you heard of the book called Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss? Uh, no. <laughs> so you should definitely check it out. Maybe this book came out like okay, 15 yeah. years ago. But I remember I read it when I was 18, 19 years old. I was thinking, wow, you could work. I don't think he really did work four hour per week just for the record. Uh, for everybody, you know, you could, <laughs> but so it's essentially he was using that as a title to attract a certain kind of audience. But he was saying that you can set things up to bring income, whether in US dollars or in euros, and you spend that money in somewhere is a lot cheaper or a little bit cheaper. For that time, I think he was where a lot of people are living in Bali, in Thailand, in yeah. Vietnam and maybe in Hainan, uh, which is an island in the south of China, that is relatively cheap, but they make money on dollars and euros, right? So the, they turn the stronger currency into local currency. And in this yeah. way, maybe let's say you run an apartment for 500 euros uh, in Porto or 1,000 or 2,000 euros in Paris or Los Angeles, but then you go to Bali and then you find the exactly same size of apartment, exactly the same setting, but probably even better with 200 euro per month. And then you save the nice. other 500 to 1,800 into something else or just save it or you spend it on a personal yeah. driver or whatever, right? But you have that money and you can invest um, in those money yourself. And that is also a way for you to get better at control of your financial future. So right. I read that book and remember that till this day. That's really interesting. I will read it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And what do you think spontaneously when you think about Porto? Could you please elaborate? What do you think when you think of, of Porto? <laughs> I think what I gave, I gave my friends here at Corto Palata this morning. Um, I gave them port wine. <laughs> right. Oh, it's from Gaia, <laughs> right? I did this, I did yeah. my study. <laughs> I think about surfing. I think about the bridges. I think about the beautiful smile of strangers on the street or my friends. I think about bacalao. <laughs> yeah. I think about more than that now. I think about a city that has a lot of cultures. I think I read um, this article and we're also writing this article in Chinese now. This is one good title. It's like Porto, the perfect blend of ancient or the perfect blend of history and tech or the perfect blend of history and the future, right? Because really in Porto, you have everything. You know, technically you could say that to every city, but uh, I just personally have the strong connection with Porto. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you. And how did you prepare to be a digital nomad? Uh, number one, 
this is special to the kids who want to do this. Travel light. Yeah. Um, yeah. When you're, when yeah. you're doing digital nomad, you force to travel really light. Be very good at packing. Be very spontaneous. Mm -hmm. Be non-attachment to what you own. I constantly, yeah. I barely buy new clothes. Um, luckily enough, I am an investor of a small fashion boutique based in Los Angeles. So mm -hmm. I try to only wear clothes from my brand. And even when I do, let's say, go from Malaga to Porto, which was from summer or late spring weather to kind of end of winter, beginning of spring weather, I did bring yeah. a coat with me. But sometimes you just have to leave them behind, donate to the people who need, right? So I left my coat there, actually. And uh, I asked my friends to donate to the homeless people because there are some homeless people, maybe not so much in Matosinius, but there are some homeless people in the city center area. And yeah. I mean, they would need those clothes more than I do because I mean, in the evening, it still could be still windy, could be still raining, and then you know they, uh, the cold have served me very well, and I hope the cold served them. How did you find out about Porto as a destination for digital nomads, in specific? I think I also read the list somewhere, in an article. Can't remember exactly where, but. Oh yeah, that's great. And do you remember? any challenge at the beginning when you came to Porto and what emotions did you feel and why? I think this quote-unquote challenge is not only for Porto but maybe for nearly yeah. all digital nomads or all people who travel a lot which is yeah also I believe because I was talking to my friends about this I believe I not only speak for myself but I speak for a lot of people which is you go there you stay in one city and you meet them you connect with them and then when you move to yeah. a different city and you will need to be doing that over and over again right because right. i believe that although technology have helped us so much but we yeah. are still tribe animals right which means that in short <laughs> friends to survive and have a healthy happy and fulfilled life i assume yeah. or at least most people do maybe a hardcore yogi doesn't need that uh, <laughs> so which is finding your tribe, right? Right. And in a way, yoga studio helps, crypto conference help because it's a event gathering mm -hmm. a lot of people are sharing the same interest. Right. Makes total sense, yeah. And uh, what would make you leave Porto and why? This time I feel it was time for me to go. Yeah. Probably also because I pulled my leg muscle. So <laughs> living by the beach, I couldn't surf anymore. And I have some business to do, meeting to take care of in Madrid. So, Right. And as a digital nomad, it's kind of your lifestyle, right? So it makes sense to live. <laughs> yeah. When it's time to go, it's time to go. <laughs> right. And do you recommend being a digital nomad to others? In your opinion, what are the requirements for that and why? I will say that this is not a life for everybody. Yeah. But just like you cannot describe 100% what tomato tastes like if someone has not had tomato in their life. Yeah. So they will have to try it for themselves to see if they like it or not. And I think kind of with the past um, question, right? It's being your own best friend when traveling so much is super important because yeah. there's one thing is that you are alone versus feeling or being overwhelmed by the emotion of loneliness. And they are totally two different things, right? Yeah. Because we're all independent and powerful individuals, right? Yeah. Learning to be your best friend at any circumstances is extremely important skill for any person not only just a digital nomad i would say that's a really great way to put it yeah <laughs> it's like that song uh lyrics um maybe you know this it's like isn't it the reason you're holding me tonight is because we are scared to be lonely do you know this? oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> an edm version but it has a, like a acoustic version right it's a very beautiful song Right. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you yeah. know that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right. true. So it's like kind of perfect connecting the dots together is uh, kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. 
And do you recommend Portal to other digital nomads and 100%. why? 100%. I would say I already say pretty much all the reasons uh, in the past, like, five of the question above. Yeah. But guys, like, maybe yeah. people really like Rome, maybe some people like Paris, maybe some people really like Porto. Just yeah. come check, check out for yourself. Yeah. One thing is that why or why not? And also, by the way, um, Beatrice, right? Yeah. I also met another digital nomad on my surfing lesson. I will put you in touch with her if you want to interview. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Her name is Katrina from Estonia. She's very kind and she does marketing. And I will put you in touch with her. So thank you so much. Yeah. And also, would you recommend Porto to a sibling or best friend and why? For sure. I think I would love to bring someone in my family to show them around Porto. Definitely. It's my family really like the beach and yeah. although the Atlantic Ocean is not as warm as the Mediterranean Sea, but yeah, <laughs> fine. it's fine. It's fine. It's not cold. Yeah, yeah it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, we're from the north too. We can deal with that. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So these were all the questions I had for you. Uh, once again, thank you so much for your time and participation. I really enjoyed hearing about your experiences as a digital nomad. And I personally think that everyone should hear your experiences because are so in inspiring and so interesting. And uh, digital nomads are so open-minded. Uh, it's uh, a fresh air, actually. I don't know how to describe it, but everyone should hear you talking. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, they are kind of have to do it because I have a podcast, so. <laughs> right <laughs> thank you for that um question for you is that yeah it sounds you're very passionate about this lifestyle are you interested in trying this out yourself or are you going to do that too so uh at first it wasn't something that it wasn't in my plans but after uh i i've been doing this research uh and also talking with you guys digital nomads and hearing your experiences I'm more and more motivated to to pursue this lifestyle. I wouldn't say like forever, but a couple of years. I think that it would be great. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, welcome. And where would it be your first destination? It's a really interesting question. Uh, I would have to research more, but probably different from Porto to have uh, different experiences. And being outside of the bubble, actually. Maybe Bali, but maybe Mara. Bali, it would be great. Yeah. But for, yeah. So I had to do some research, but uh, uh, it would be a city with a beach. It's, it has to be <laughs> because I love, I love the beach. I love the sea. Do you go to, um, how often do you go to the beach in Porto? I go to the beach when the weather is good which is more in summer, but sometimes in spring I go to. Um, I can tell. It's my favorite place. I love the beach. Yeah, I can tell you it seems like you haven't been to the beach that often from since that you're not super oh. tender now. <laughs> yeah, I'm really white. <laughs> That's funny. And uh, this sorry. is really important for a digital nomad to know. Tell us where the local people like you, yeah. where do you go? The beach, you know, because I've heard there's like very beautiful beach in the north of Matosinos as well, yeah. right? What, yeah. what are the names? What are your favorite so, ones? Yeah, you have Matosinos Beach, you have Lessa da Palmeira Beach, you have also uh, beaches at Foz. Uh, they are very beautiful. You also have uh, in Vila Nova de Gaia, mm -hmm. uh, very too many beaches uh, and they are very beautiful too. Yeah, uh, they are known for that also, and you have more uh, far away from Porto, but not that far away. Uh, for example, Maceda Beach, it's in Alvar. You also have beaches uh, in Spinho. So yeah, you have a lot of beaches here. <laughs> Do you? Where's your favorite destination in Portugal? Could be included beach, could be not, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe Algarve, do you go there often? What yeah. is your personally favorite uh, beach to go to? Besides Porto, maybe. 
Uh, the beach? Yeah. Are you asking me? Uh, yeah. The Algarve, the Algarve beaches uh, are my favorites because uh, the water is not as cold as here in the north, for uh. sure. And I usually go to Algarve uh, at summer. It's like a routine for years. Yeah. And I love it there. <laughs> right. It's, I do that on my vacation time. Yeah. With friends and family. <laughs> That's what I heard. It's super busy in the summer, right? So it's winter yeah. when there's nobody, but I think yeah. in July, August is super busy. Yeah, because the weather, uh, because it's so hot in there and the water, the temperature is great. It's not hot, it's not cold, it's perfect. Uh, so yeah, I love it. Not only because of the beach, but I personally love the beaches there. Yeah. yeah. And they are very beautiful also. Very beautiful, exactly. I spent Lagos, I was there for like one month. I really, really like yeah. it. Yeah. yeah Fado, not that much. It's still beautiful, but you know, there's no really beach in Fado. I was there because there's the airport. Yeah. Where do you see yourself in three years from now? That's a really interesting question. Mm -hmm. uh, so three years for now, uh, this might be a little bit cliche. <laughs> I don't know if this word exists in English. Yeah, but... it does. Dream big. Okay. Dream big. Yeah. So I I want to be in a place where I feel I I'm happy. Uh, I I for sure want to have an international experience. As I already said, uh, I I have to do first a little bit of research. Uh, but yeah, I I probably for sure being be in another country because I'm I'm very young, and the world is out there, so I have to enjoy while I can. <laughs> How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, I'm 22. Okay, yeah, indeed. I would say that from my personal experience, do the research, but also don't to rely on it. Um, yeah. Go see for yourself to see how you feel. Yeah. Right? People could say this the best place on the planet, but you have to feel it. Yeah. And yes, I think people like us were adventure seekers, right? We are open-minded. We are, this is what I ask, uh, this is what I tell people when they, Ask me about my troubles and things. As not that I'm so interested in, so eager to go to the next destination, but I'm super interested in when I go to a city in a way that reflects on who I am. So not only I'm learning more about the culture, the people, the city itself, but I also understand and learning more layers of myself as well. Yeah, it makes sense. Right. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, also, I was thinking now about Barcelona because um, I was doing, uh, it was supposed for me to do Erasmus there uh, when I was doing my bachelor's degree. But I was one of the people who had um, a little bit, a little bit, no, half of the time while I was doing my bachelor's degree. Uh, in the pandemic so i couldn't go to erasmus i couldn't uh, experience uh, experiences that experience that so barcelona is a place where i want to experience to live here to live in yeah uh, so yeah i remember that now yeah <laughs> great i might be there in beginning of may or in july so keep that in mind. If you're there, let me know. And I have some okay. I would send you some recommendations. Barcelona is a great city. It's very, very beautiful. Very beautiful. Very clean. Yeah, Pretty I already clean. went there, uh, but just traveling. I wasn't living there. And I there? really wanted to have that experience in Barcelona. How long were you there when you were traveling? Uh, sorry, I didn't understand. How long were you there when you were traveling? How long? Yeah, how long? How many days? Uh, it, it was like four days. It was a really short time. Hmm. <laughs> so yeah four days for part of all that's very yes yeah, very short yeah it's so yeah. big did you go to the pablo picasso museum uh yeah nice i went to the, there i go. went there there yeah. you go nice. it's really beautiful yeah I believe there's also a Dali museum, maybe 30 minutes, one hour drive outside of Barcelona. It's also very great. I personally haven't been, but I heard many great things about it. I didn't uh, didn't heard about it, I, I guess. Nice. nice. I lived in Porto all my life. <laughs> nice. Well, lovely city to love. It's very beautiful. 
yeah yeah it is <laughs> i i have not met one person with bad vibes in porto to be honest i have not met one so that's great yeah. so your experience here was very good <laughs> okay. yeah not bad 11 out of 10 so not bad actually people here i think are very friendly super with international people yeah super Super. You what well, you say? You Porto people are more inter friendly to international people than to local people. Is that true? Uh, I don't know. I think it depends. Yeah. I think it depends on the person, but I wouldn't say that. I would. I would say that uh, Portuguese people in general. Uh, there are some who might be not for sure, but are very friendly. Uh, in general, are very kind in general. In in generals and and like to help <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah, totally, totally. i really admire and appreciate that well <laughs> Peter, thank you so much and thank you best of luck with everything with your research thank you so much with your thesis <laughs> you're gonna ace it i already know it because you <laughs> like me who is extremely knowledgeable and fun and thank you yes appreciate that yeah. keep in touch yeah for sure yes. thank you so you too, much you too in spain okay Okay, have a nice day. Thank you so okay, much. Okay, you as well. Ciao, ciao.